up, guys? Today, we're gonna see just how big the entire universe is. By the end, we're gonna feel tiny. The distance light in a vacuum travels in one Planck time. Okay, so I think that's like the universal measurement. I guess that's like the tiniest thing that we're able to observe is something called a Planck length and a Planck particle. So it kind of almost looks like a universe in and of itself. This is the size of an average human must be compressed into to become a black hole. Okay. This is a neutron. So we're still at like the atomic level. We're not into space yet. We're not into like Earth or Jupiter or Mars or the Milky Way galaxy. So those are still atoms. Actually, sorry, they were smaller than atoms. This is an atom. And look how much bigger it is than the actual neutrons. That is an iron atom. A deficiency of iron in blood can cause anemone, if you didn't know. That is something called a buckyball. It's the same shape as a, as a football. DNA. Wow, dude. And it looks so big compared to the last thing, which is crazy. Carbon nanotube. Oh gosh, this is like a science class today. That is a pyro parvovirus. That that that's what's a that's a virus. That's bad. Bacteriophage. Okay. A mycoplasma genitalium. That is a okay. All right. We're we're getting a little bit bigger here. That is a meme virus. That thing is huge. I don't like that. That is a red blood cell. It looks like a giant compared to the viruses. That is a white blood cell. That thing, dude, look at the hairs on it. It's got a bunch of, like, tentacles. That is the thickness of paper. We are nowhere near the size of a universe yet. That is a human egg. Wait, oh, okay. I was, I was very confused. I get it now. That's human hair, which is super tiny. What is this? A grain of salt. That is just one Minecraft cube of salt. You can't even see that with your eyeballs. You have to look at everything that we've seen so far in this video under a microscope. That is a British penny. Okay, that's probably like the first thing that we can actually see in real life with our eyeballs. A grasshopper, a six-legged insect that inhabits meadows and fields, if you didn't know. An Amazonian parrot, predominantly green, apparently. A computer monitor. Right, what, what, what does that say? Charles Lee, Thomas Cornway, these men take your name and take it through the mud. My name's been through a lot. I can take it. Well, I don't have your name. I don't have your titles. I, it, <laughs> that's Hamilton. They got Hamilton in the back. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Defined as the distance traveled by light in a perfect vacuum. Okay, that was the last thing. This is a protoceratops. A, a dinosaur, I guess? That is a human person. That is us. That is me. Okay, what is that? The largest species of ammonite? That thing was bigger than people. A gigantoraptor. Yo, these dinosaurs are crazy big. Okay, that thing, it looks like a pterodactyl. An Allosaurus. It's like a baby version of a T-Rex. The Cardotaurus. That thing is deadly. The Gigantosaurus. That's my favorite. My favorite dinosaur of all time, the Gigantosaurus. The Argentinosaurus. I think it's one of the biggest dinosaurs of all time. The Hubble Space Telescope is bigger than all of the dinosaurs. I did not know that it was that big. Blue Whale. The biggest creature to ever exist on planet Earth. And it's still nowhere near as big as the Boeing 747. The An Antonov AN-255 Maria. The International Space Station is huge! Wow, dude, I don't think I ever saw a size comparison. Hyperion, the tallest tree in the world. I want to see that one day. The Hindenburg-class airship. That is super big! That makes, like, blue whales look tiny! The USS Gerald R. Ford. That is a literal ship that can float. I don't understand how it floats. It, it's crazy to me. The Empire State Building. All right, we're starting to get into things that I know about here. The Burj Khalifa. The tallest building in the entire world. Other than the Jeddah Tower. The tallest building in the entire world. All right, we're moving into actual space stuff. There's a meteor crater 1.2 kilometers deep. The Large Hadron Collider? A particle accelerator? They built that thing? That is huge! The tallest mountain on Earth is Mount Everest, but it's nowhere near as big as the Mariana Trench. Chicks Kloob? That's what caused the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, I'm pretty sure. And then you have something called the Crab Pulsar. It is a relatively young star. And then there's a black hole. XTE. Who names these? 
feel like AI named everything in space. Marathon, a race. Oh, oh, that's how far a race is. Wait a second. That's insane, dude. Rhode Island, 75 kilometers. We want the only known moon of Neptune. Uh, this is, what is this? Complex Organics. That, that's a moon. I think this is an asteroid. The largest asteroid in the solar system. If that thing crashed into Earth, we'd all be dead. It's almost as big as the entirety of the UK. Ceres is a dwarf planet orbiting the asteroid belt. Sedna is a wildly eccentric orbit coming close. To, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait. Go back to that. It's coming in close as 80 times or 85 times the Earth's sun distance. Wow. That means it's gotten pretty close to us. Madagascar is 1,600 kilometers. Charon, second dwarf planet in the Pluto-Charon binary system. It is about half the size of Pluto. Then you have Triton, which is the biggest, most dominant moon of Neptune. Europa, which is orbiting Jupiter, which are, we, these are huge. That's our moon right there. So far we've gone from a literal neutron all the way up to our moon. And we have a long ways to go. That's like, that's like such a tiny scope of how big our universe is. That's like literally like a speck on my pinky of how big the universe can get. Okay, that's our first planet, Mercury, at least in our solar system. There's Titan right there. The only moon to have a substantial atmosphere, so we could potentially live on it one day if we figure out how to make it livable and terraform. A hypothetical planet that collided with Earth 4.5 billion years ago? I didn't even know about that. How did I not know about this? We've collided with another planet. What is that? A black hole near the galactic center. What is this? Trappist LE, the most promising habitable planets known. And it's only 40 light years away from Earth, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we have no idea how to travel at light speed. So until we do that, until Elon Musk figures that out, we're kind of trapped here. It's kind of funny that its name is Trappist. And that is Earth. That's our home! And that's Kepler 452b, which is 1400 light years from planet Earth. And it's also another promising planet of maybe something that we could live on one day. Millions and millions, maybe even like a billion years in the future when we figure out how to get there. That is a white dwarf, which used to be a sun. That is Neptune. Neptune is so much bigger than Earth. Uranus. What is Gliese? It is the first hot Neptune to be discovered. Oh, wow. The Minecraft world. <laughs> That's insane, dude. They have a Java Minecraft world, which I didn't even realize was bigger than some planets. That's crazy that we made something bigger than planets. Saturn. Wow, dude. These planets are so much bigger than Earth. They look... They make Earth look like a tiny little, like, rubber bouncy ball. And it's like a giant basketball. Wow, twice Jupiter's radius. Wasp 17b. The moon's orbit is a little bit bigger than that ginormous planet. What is this? Proxima Centauri. That's a sun, and that is an incredibly rare wolf riot star. But it's nowhere near the size of our sun. Look at our sun, and then you can barely just see Earth down there. Earth is so tiny. I'm pretty sure you could fit like thousands and thousands of Earths inside of our sun. Just like the sheer size of things in our universe makes me scared a little bit, but also like I, I like it. However, I am terrified by it. Like it's cool to think about. It, it, it's almost, I mean, it is just like science fiction. Like it doesn't even feel real because you can't really like see it, but you can, like you can kind of see it. You can look at the moon, you can look at the sun and you're like, hey, they're there. But then it's like, what? It's actually real. Like, like it is something floating in space. That's space is just something that's like floating in our universe. And it's, it's just like so grand. And it's so weird to think that we are just so tiny in this huge universe. What are we looking at here? What is this? This is two stars that are orbiting each other. What? And at this point, it's like, you can't even fathom how big these things are. That is Sagittarius A, which is the black hole at the center of our galaxy. The graphics around that look so cool. 
That is Earth's orbit of the sun. What is that, a ring system? What? I don't even understand what a ring system is, but it looks beautiful. Pistol star. Blue hypergiant star. What is that? The 10th brightest star in the night sky. It, it, it has the second largest angular size of any star. That thing looks like a spicy meatball. Dude. Whoa, bigger spicy meatball. That used to be the world's largest star that we know about. That is the current largest star. It, you can't even see our sun anymore. Our sun is so tiny that you cannot see it on the screen. And that means that the Earth, w like, was already tiny when the sun was the biggest thing on the screen. And now it's, it's dwarfed by this ginormous meatball. Wow. Okay, that's Neptune's orbit. Now we're just getting into orbits. What is that? A hypothetical star that existed in the early universe containing a black hole at its core. I actually saw a really cool video about this, that there's there's stars that were so big that they would actually collapse in on themselves so that there was a black hole in the center of the star. And then it would be too big to absorb all of the star. So you would have like the out part, like the outer part of the, the sun would pretty much just still be the sun, but in the middle would be a black hole that would like slowly eat it up until it would eventually collapse in on itself in a giant supernova. And it just sounds so cool. Obviously, if that happened, we'd all die, but it's cool to think about. That is one light day. That's how far we would have to travel. And what is this? Currently the largest black hole known with a mass 66 billion times that of the sun. And that is the distance the sun currently travels in a century. That's like, we are floating through space. We are moving, what is that, 725, is that million, billion? That's why I am, I am too dumb to be watching this video. We are traveling so much in space every single day, every single week, every single year, century. Like we're just floating. Everything is just floating around. It's so scary, but it's so cool. What is this, Arp Mador? One of the most distant globular clusters in the Milky Way's galactic halo. That is one light year. That is how far light travels in a year. What? The Oort cloud. A theoretical cloud of planetesimals orbiting the sun at distances ranging from 2,000 to 100,000 AU. I don't even know what AU means. One parsec. A distance unit based on the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Distance from the Sun to Proxima Centauri. What is that? The Pillars of Creation. A nebula formation inside the Eagle Nebula. The Bubble Nebula. Oh my goodness, dude. We're getting too far out. We're getting way too far out right now. What is this? Distance to what? Toy 799D was the first Earth-sized planet found in the habitable zone of its parent star. That's how far it is? 101 light years away? That's the first time we found a planet that was in the habitable zone of their star, which means that, like, it could have conditions similar to that of Earth, where we have, like, an atmosphere, we have water, we have, like, like the best conditions for life to form. It's so far away, bro. Omega Centauri, the largest globular cluster in the Milky Way. That is the distance to the red supergiant. We're going to stay far away from that. That is a small megalinic cloud. That is a large megalinic cloud. Oh my gosh, we're moving out into galaxies. This is the distance to other galaxies. And there are so many. The Milky Way is one of the bigger ones, it looks like. The Sombrero Galaxy. Hogue's object is bigger. Hey, look at that! Look how tiny the Milky Way Galaxy looks in comparison to the Andromeda Galaxy. Like, it just, like, there's always a bigger fish in space. But the fish is a galaxy. The Tadpole Galaxy. Wow. It looks so cool. Distance Earth has orbited the sun. We, okay, all right, I'm actually pretty proud of Earth for being able to orbit the sun that much. It's orbited the sun 450,000 light years. Distance of the Andromeda Galaxy, that's pretty darn far. 
what is that? The galaxy is abnormally large, containing 100 trillion stars. The Milky Way just has 200 billion. That other galaxy that we've seen has 100 trillion stars. I have no words! And this is just our group. The local group contains the Milky Way, the Andromeda, the Triangulum Galaxy, as well as at least 80 dwarf galaxies. So the amount of planets in our universe is like, literally, you look up into the night sky and you see stars. That There's little planets, like, literally around probably each one of those stars. And that's only what we can see. There's more that we can't even see. And that's just in our local group. And you can keep zooming out from our local group. Like, look at that. There, there's just a void of a bunch of different galaxies. What are we even looking at? Ooh, the super void. There's a super cluster. We're inside of that, the PC Cetus super cluster. There's the Great Wall. It's like the edge of the observable universe. And then there's one billion parsecs. And there's the Hubble Deep Field. It's an area so small that contains only a few Milky Way stars, but 3,000 ancient galaxies. There's like 3,000 galaxies. And then this is it. Our observable universe. That's it. That's like as far as we can look. That's actually crazy to think that we're able to look, what is that, 93 like billion light years into space? Just using telescopes. Using stuff that we made on Earth. We're able to know all of this information. Just from our little, our little planet that is like smaller than the tip of a pin comparatively to everything in the universe. And it also could just extend further and further and further. We could literally, it's almost like Horton Hears a Who. Like we could be such a tiny little speck. We could be like the size of an atom in, in like just our entire observable universe. We could be the size of a little tiny atom and then there could be more and more and more and more. Like we could be the size of the, the thing at the beginning of the video the what is it? Uh, the not 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 the parsec, but like the, the 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 piece of measurement that was the the tiniest thing, the Planck, the Planck length. We could be the size of a Planck length in comparison to everything else that we don't know about, and it's constantly expanding. At least that we can tell, and it just keeps going, and it just keeps going. I feel so tiny right now. If you guys enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like and click this video, which will probably be a little bit, a little bit, uh, less scary. <laughs>